Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about doing scroll work, text, and other similar freehand on books or scrolls or whatever you happen to have on your mini. So I'm painting up this mini here, which is uh, St. Uh, Dolores from the TGG2 line, and I converted her to have this book in her hand, and uh, I wanted to do something in the book. So this seems like it would be a sort of religious manuscript to me, and so it should be sort of an illuminated text. So I want to talk about how we approach doing text on a small area like this. Um, you can be as complex as you want with it, but obviously... There's a couple tips to keep in mind. So the first thing that I'll say right out of the gate is you're, there are three critical elements to doing tiny text like this. So for those of you who don't want to sit through the whole thing, here's the three critical elements. One, you need an extremely sharp, fine-tipped brush. So here I have a size zero uh, from the miniature line for Windsor Newton. You want something with an incredibly sharp, precise tip. Okay, that's point the first. Um, second, you want paint that's going to flow really well. So if you have, if you need to add some flow aid or something like that, you want something that's going to go off the brush very easy when you just barely touch the brush to the miniature. Now, at the same time, you want to make sure that that easily flowing paint is mostly wicked off your brush already. You do not want to suddenly run a bunch of paint down onto the area with your very wet paint. So you're going to be dealing with extremely wet free-flowing paint you need to make sure all the extra is wiped off and you only have uh, the proper amount in the brush which means you'll be testing on the back of your hand first or whatever um, finally don't try to write actual words especially not on something this small if you can picture this scale this would be like somebody holding a book 20 or 30 feet away from you and holding it up in the air you wouldn't be able to read the words you would just be aware that there is text okay all right, so the first thing I'll say is when you're doing books like this, um, they're often sort of illuminated books or, you know, books that would have been written by hand, especially if you're doing fantasy miniatures. And so chances are they're not going to just be, like when we look at a modern book, it's often just rows of text going like chick, 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 across. But of course, you know, individual artisans who were creating these books would have wanted things to be more visually interesting. So they often drew and stuff like that in the margins or had stuff things like that on there. So we're going to start out with a mix of black and a little bit of Vallejo model color wood grain, which is actually like a transparent paint. Um, the point being, you don't have to use those exact things. You just want something that's probably a little bit brown black. And the reason you want brown black as opposed to straight black is straight black looks too stark on white paper. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put some little designs around the edge of our book. We're going to do this corner and this corner. And we're not going to do anything too complicated which are with our paint, which is nice and free-flowing. We're just going to put two little squigglies. Okay, there's our first squiggly. And then up here in the corner. There's our second squiggly. Again, these don't need to be anything that impressive. They're just there to create some visual interest on the page. Now... The next thing, and, you know, again, it just breaks up the page, creates it, perfect, blah, 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 excuse me, prevents it from being a sort of wall of text. Now, if you get a little overzealous, like to me, that line looks a little too thick. Okay, let's just go back to our original page color, what we had, which is also still over here on my palette. And again, I'm going to just come in and very carefully... Trace the edge of that line and go ahead and kind of thin that out just a little. 
right? So that way it's nice and nice and smooth. And that's part of the other thing you can do. You can always go in and correct if you make a mistake with this. I actually ended up with a slightly brighter color, so I'm going to push this around a little bit just so we see it doesn't look like There we go. There we go. Got a little extra highlighting in there, too. Yay. And that's just it. You can't worry about it too much. Okay. Now it looks like that lower page is slightly brighter, which it probably should have anyways. So, hey, there you go. Yeah, I meant to do that. There's no mistakes, just happy accidents. Okay. So now we have our little squiggles on the side to kind of create some visual interest. The other thing I'm going to do is, since this is a, a religious text and she has, like, flowers on the top of her head and stuff, I want to put a little rose right here okay so to do that uh we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and get a nice deep green color which in this case is going to be uh riff green from uh scale 75 just have it's a it's a color that looks very much like like the green of a stem okay and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and in a situation like this, where we want to do a very fine uh, actual item, what we're going to do is we're just going to focus more on dots. Rather than trying to draw a line, we're just going to touch it over and over again. Tiny little dots. Okay? And I'm just doing very light presses, very light little dots to make my little leaves... Right? So I didn't try to draw that whole line. I'm just doing little tiny dots over and over again. That lets me make sure I control the paint that's going on very carefully. Okay? And then after I'm done, I can kind of get in and smooth it out. It's just that easy. Okay? Now we have a little stem. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to that... Uh, we're actually, we're going to go in, we're going to take some of our red color. I've got a nice little red here I liked for my red rose. It's kind of the same red that's on her because, you know, I want that to be aligned color-wise. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make some dots for the flower itself. Okay? So, same story again. We're just going to do some petals here, and we can cover over part of our green. We're just doing dots, just little careful dots. Okay. So now we've got a little flower there. Looks very flowerish. And then we want to kind of darken in between the middle here, like where we can still see the page. So we're going to go back to that original brown black color that we're going to use for the text and we used for our squiggles. And very, very carefully, in between where my flower petals are, okay, I'm just going to come in and do some quick dots. Again, this is all just dots. All just dots. And there you go. Now I have a nice dark center to that flower. Just that easy. So, you can see, you can do some very simple little quick freehand, and it's really just pressing the tip of your brush down. As, like, as little tiny, tiny dots. Now let's talk about the text itself. So these texts would frequently have sort of a large first letter, you know, and then go into normal text. So we're going to do that. Don't try to draw real letters. Just do lines and squiggles. So we're going to start with just a slightly larger character that kind of looks like that. And then we're just going to go with tiny little lines and squiggles all the way across. And I'm just doing dots and hashes and squiggle marks and stuff like that. I'm not being careful. Oh, I'm sorry. I am being extremely careful, but I'm not being precise. That's what I should say. I'm just doing little stabs and hashes and different things. You can run any amount across the page you want to horizontally. Okay, and that's fine, because text in these books would tend to be varied. 
as far as how far across the page it runs. But you want to make sure that on your vertical spacing, you're very similar across the board. So there you go. You can see just little dots, little squiggles, nothing big. And there we go. We have a nice illuminated manuscript page. Just that easy. So didn't take long at all. Again, let me, so let's summarize our keys. Number one, very sharp brush. Number two, a paint that flows very well, but most of the extra paint is wicked off the brush. You don't want to splash all over. Uh, and three, uh, don't try to draw real letters. When you're doing your text, you want something probably brown black or blue black, depending on whether the white pages are cold or warm, because stark black will look way too stark. Normal text, even though it's printed in black ink, tends to be a little gray. When you see it from a distance, there's interfering light. Uh, so you don't tend to see black text. It actually looks a lighter color to your eye. Adding in a little brown helps soften it and make it look more like a real, like real text on a book. If you're doing it, you want to keep the page visually interesting. That can be through little squiggles or designs around the edge of the page. If you want to do any freehand in the book, it's so small you don't want to try to draw it. You want to instead just focus on tiny, tiny little dots. Just poke, 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 poke to build your image one little tiny dot at a time. And then finally, for your text itself, you're just doing tiny little dots, hashes, dashes, and squiggles. And you're just randomly kind of attacking it with your brush. Very, very light touches, keeping your vertical spacing as even as possible throughout the book. So there you go. That's how you do a, a manuscript or a scroll work on a, on a book. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, if you like it, give it a like. Um, share it with somebody if you think they would find it helpful. That's always the nicest thing you can do. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. And as always, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.